Thank you for the uh, wonderful introduction. <clears throat> for those uh, who are following me on Facebook, you probably already saw the post that I did. I did like seven, I did like seven posts <laughs> already. And uh, uh, I'm really grateful to be here and honored to be um, selected as this year's uh, visiting professor uh, for the Ganga Hospital. So I think it's very important for us as reconstructive surgeons that you know, we have fun in our life. And I'm really grateful that I do have fun. And, and you know, it, it's basically, it's because we do what we do. Uh, we love doing surgery. I mean, uh, Raja has just shown you a slide. We love teaching and sharing and doing some charity work, research, writing, and, and sometimes some uh, unpleasant, but we do administrative work. And, and this is what really makes my life fun as a reconstructive uh, surgeon. And as Hari says, and because we love what we do, we travel a lot. And probably Raja is probably one of the few guys who travel more than me. <laughs> but for me, um, I love travel because, you know, I love tasting beer. I love beer. And, and, and basically, like Hari said, this is the map that I always show when I give my talk. And my wish is that I get to taste um, every beer in the world. One day I went to Belgium and I said, hey, look, one of my goals is to taste beer. And I go, oh, you're at the right place. We have 2,000 beer in Belgium. <laughs> so 2,000, it's like I have to stay there like five years to taste all that beer. But nevertheless, uh, my favorite beer till today, uh, I'm sorry to disappoint some of you guys who are really beer fans, is Sam Adams from Boston Beer. I know some of you are shaking your head. But I'm really dying because, you know, whenever I come to India, I love Kingfisher. And hopefully we'll get some tonight, uh, get some really quality beer. And, you know, we're so lucky because, you know, for me, I'm so grateful because I have a job that I feel, you know, I love this job and I love the people I meet. And it doesn't feel like work. And like Confucius says, if you have a job you love, I mean, if you love doing what you do, you know, you never do work in your life. So when I do travel, when I do see new people, when I do my work, it feels like I'm having fun. And I think that's what really matters in my life. And as a surgeon, in order to have fun in the operating room, in order to have fun in surgery, is surgery has got to be easy. It's got to be relatively fast. And it has to be reliable. Your technique has to be reliable. You have to be comfortable. But it doesn't end there. You have to share it, and you have to sort of make it so other people could have the fun too. It has to be reproducible, and you have to have a logic to say that, hey, look, this is the way it's gone, and find some evidence to support uh, your, your idea. And when you do this, you, know, you see evolution in your practice, and you feel that, oh, you're reaching another goal and another goal, and every time you reach that goal, that's what makes life and surgery really fun. But unfortunately, if you look around you, and, and, and this is the reality, is that some people, when you go and say, hey, let's try this, they go, no, you know, I don't know. You know, I just want to do things that I really want to do. You know, I want to do things that only works. And, and they're really poor listeners. And, and they just accept what they're taught. They say, do this, and they do it. They never challenge the new idea, they never want to do new things. They have sort of like a fixed mindset. And I'm very sad to say a lot of medical students have this kind of fixed mindset. We're taught to do what we're, 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 we learned. We're not trained to change. You know, we're just taught to do things that we're comfortable with. But if you have this fixed mindset, you will never feel that change that goes on. And if you read this book by Carol Dweck, which is talking about people who have a fixed mindset, like medical students, who just likes to do things over and over instead of growing, you have to really think about where you are. Because as surgeons, you know, we want to be sure that we, what we do is you know, uh, very comfortable. And it's very, very difficult to be out of that comfort zone, just repeating the things that you do. Just doing you know, the same old flap 20 years ago and after 20 years, because you feel safe in that comfort zone. But when you just go crazy and take a leap from where you are 
and just start to do something new, this is when magic really happens. And you feel really that you're growing. You feel that I could do these new things. And if I preserve, and if I just have patience, and if I embrace the challenge, if I know that I can fail but become better, and if I'm inspired by others who does this, then you see that you're growing. And when you're growing, that's what makes life fun. But most of all, that's when you start to innovate yourself. You come up with new ideas. So how do we become innovative people? How do we come up with these new ideas? And I think the first for me is always is asking why, is being curious. And you know what? If you look at this novel by uh, St. Dr. from Little Prince, all grown-ups were once children, but only few of them remember it. You know, you have little kids, you know, Dad, why does the bird fly? Dad, why is the moon half today? You know, you keep on asking questions, but one day, after college, after training, you don't ask. Hey, why do we have to do an ALT? Why don't we do something else? You know, you stop asking and you just keep on doing. And you lose that momentum of having curiosity. Because a lot of the things that we do, there's no evidence. And a lot of the things that we do, we just take it for granted because we are taught that way. I mean, why is ALT an ideal flap? Have you thought about this? You have to keep on challenging the current idea. Without challenging the current idea, you'll never know why we do this. And you'll never know if there is a better ideal flap. So you always have to question and, and, and make hypothesis. And second, you have to really seek answers. If you have a question, and if you have, you have the curiosity, a lot of the times you'll say, okay, I have a question, and then you'll forget. But for those who dwell on that question and keep on asking why, then you'll do the research. And a lot of times you'll see people who have similar questions. And you look at the history and you'll understand. And you have to challenge, where's the evidence? So you have the hypothesis, you have the question, and then you have to do the research. You go on PubMed and see, hey, this is why. Or, hey, there's nobody who's really had this kind of idea. Like, what kind of thinning? Is it reliable? And if there's no evidence, it's your job to fulfill your curiosity by doing animal studies, by doing further studies, and always seeking if there is a better way or a better solution to your question. So you do the research and you do the study. And like Thomas Edison says, there's always a better way. There's always a better way to do things. We might think that this is the best way for now, but one year later, six months later, you will find a better way if you keep on seeking for a better solution. There's always a better way. And once you have that idea, you have the, the, the idea from the hypothesis, from the curiosity, then you do the research, then you sort of come up with a general idea. Hey, maybe, maybe I could do this. And the third to innovate is when you have that hypothesis or when you have that semi-result, you have to share it. You know, you have to ask, seek guidance. You have to, you know, go to your mentors and, and, and ask, if my idea is correct. I was very lucky to have uh, Dr. Jung. He's one of the low extremity pioneers in, in Korea. And you know, he, he's been uh, really a great mentor and a guide. When I first started uh, uh, my senior year resident, I was given the chance to do um, three free flaps in a row. And believe it or not, it all failed, free flaps. So I, I went to my mentor and said, you know, I think I should go to cosmetic surgery. I don't think I'm a good microsurgeon. And he looks at me and he smacks me on the back of the head and says, you're not a microsurgeon until you kill 100 flaps. So to his definition, today, I'm still not a microsurgeon. But anyway, this is the guidance that you seek because the guide, the mentor, loves you. The mentor wants great greatness for you. And once you find great mentors and friend, then you talk with them about your ideas, whether this is good or not. And then you listen to presentations of other um, presenters and you get more ideas and you go to meetings. And at meetings, we meet great people like Raja when I met him. At Ganga, I met him in, 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 um, in one of the, uh, uh, in Japan at the world meeting. 
And you see their talks and you see their ideas and you see what kind of constraint that they worked on and still have great ideas and never give up and keep pursuing their dreams. And you're inspired by them. And with this kind of inspiration, it really helps you to keep on pushing. And you push not only through publications, but through other presentations and really sharing your ideas. At the same time, sharing your ideas, at the same time, accepting critique. Hey, look, I don't think that's a great idea. Maybe you should look into this angle. The more people you talk with, the more idea, uh, you'll, your idea is going to be refined. And you know, you guys are all lucky here, the young generations. Why? Because now you have social media. You could have mentors from all over the world. I used to only have mentors from my hospital. But now, on a regular basis, I get this kind of message, at least seven or eight messages a day. And this is from a doctor that I don't know from India. He goes, hello, Dr. Hong. Um, can you help me out here? I'm doing diabetic foot. I don't know this. What is your approach? And you know, I text him back. And back and forth, we become friends and we share ideas. And this is what we do. On the right, I never met this guy. He goes, I saw your video and I did it and it works. Thank you. So we live in a world where you don't have to be bound by territory. You don't have to be bound by, uh, by, by your peers right next door. You have endless bound and you have endless resource on the net, on the social media to seek guidance and to really share your ideas and to open to be open to critical uh, to open to be critique and sort of refine your ideas and really get a consensus whether or not your question was valid was my curiosity valid was my research valid and then you become you have a general consensus and idea and say you build a confidence and say hey this is a pretty good idea and then once you have that once you have the evidence once you have the general consensus once you do the research finally you have to do it if you have a great idea and if you never do it it's never going to come true creativity is thinking about new things innovation is doing new things you think about it and if you don't do it then it's never going to happen that's why you have to go through the due process of thinking whether this is right or not of asking your mentors of asking whether this is a good idea or not. So once you get that approval, you have to do it. And when you do it, you have to accept that failure is part of your life. You do it, you fail, you do it, you fail. And, but the real failure is when you stop doing it. That's when you really fail. So failure, accept it. But as long as you learn something from it, failure is never a failure. Flap dies. I mean, you have your complications, but we learn from it. Of course, it's painful, but we learn from it. And we become better and better every day. And you do it, you, you, you evolve, you improve, you overcome, you persevere, and most of all, you grow through this process. Dr. Koshima, also one of my mentors, when I visited him to, do, uh, to learn about uh, lymphedema, LVA, uh, this is back in 2002. I went to his clinic and said, uh, Dr. Koshima, can you teach me? He goes, yeah, yeah, sit down, sit down. And we're looking at the microscope together. And uh, he says, this is lymphatic vessel. And I'm looking at the same microscope, sitting across him, say, where? Here. Where? Here. I can't see it. Okay, okay, change. You come to the surgeon's side. So I go change, and I'm looking into it. and say, now you see? No, I'm sorry, I don't see. And he looks at me, JP, just believe you see it, okay? Just believe. And you have to believe that you can do it. You have to believe that your ideas are true. You have to believe that you put it into action and you have no regrets. You have to believe that you fail, but you will grow. And as long as you believe yourself, you'll see magic happen. So the four steps of innovation is you ask why, you do the research, you do the due diligence, and you communicate with your peers and, and validate your idea and finally, putting into action. So let's look at my short innovation journey. So we talked about the ALT. I said, hey, is ALT really the thinnest flap? Is it the, really the best flap? And I sort of started to think about thinning. And this is where I came up with the idea of elevating it in the superficial fascia between the deep fat and the superficial fat. And I said, hey, maybe the ALT skin is still thick. Maybe there's a thinner skin. 
And that's why I looked into the groin. I ended up doing the skip. And, and I really started to enjoy the skip. And, and the idea of making it simple, easy, reliable, that's when I started to start to use Bobi because Bobi, uh, a lot of you, we were taught that Bobi could actually injure the vessel. But if you look at the Bobi, there's two modes. There's the coagulation mode and there's the cutting mode. The problem with the cutting mode is that when you do the cutting mode, the bleeding doesn't stop. So I asked, hmm, okay, is it really true that the Bobi can hurt the vessel while dissection? So I, I started to look into the research and I started to do an animal model and we started to measure the radiance of the heat and we, we compared it with scissors, we compared it with cutting mode bovi and we compared it with bipolar and it actually shows that it's even less hot than a bipolar when you put it on a cutting mode because the radiance is so small. So we did the research because there was nobody who did the research about using monopolar bovi for dissection and we were able to publish this work and we did further study and actually proved that monopolar bovi in the cutting mode at high energy not only coagulates, but it doesn't conduct heat, and it's actually less injury than bipolar bovi, a bipolar a coagulation. So if you look at this electronic microscope, the bipolar actually does more harm than the monopolar cutting mode. Yes, that's true. On the contrary, we are taught that bipolar is much safer. But was there any evidence? No. There wasn't any evidence. So I proved the evidence, and now I'm able to do this. Oh, I'm so sorry, the video's gone. Okay, anyway, we'll, show, we'll hopefully show tomorrow. And I do this on a regular basis. We all desire to be safe, but when you're safe, you'll never see things happen. And this is the Icarus deception. Icarus, the, the myth says, don't fly too high, don't fly too low, just fly in the middle. But when, when you fly in the middle, you'll see no action, you'll see no change. And then I further went on to saying, hey look, the skip flap has a short pedicle. How can I solve this? And then this led to the super microsurgery concept of perforator to perforator. So I started to look at perforator as a recipient vessel and then keep on doing it. And then finally, when I started to work on these small perforators as recipient and went on to find a solution for ischemic diabetic limb reconstruction, hopefully we'll be talking about that later as well. So this is the journey, and the journey all started from asking why and really implementing change. As you ask, you change and you adapt, and you do. You change and you adapt and do, and you grow, as seen in my journey here. And this is what makes it fun, because we're challenging the unknown, we're challenging the known, and we're challenging the things that we will never know unless we do it. And this is where the fun is. So you practice, and you just can't do it. I mean, you don't get ideas all of a sudden in the bed. You only get great ideas, and you only get great curiosity if you keep on practicing. You have to build experience, and experience requires patience and persistence. If you look at this book, I don't know if you know the story of the pilot whose plane broke down in New York City and it was about to crash and the pilot landed very safely on the Hudson River. Hundred, all the patients, I mean all, the, all the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, the people survived in the plane, including the pilot. And he was only able to do this because he had 10,000 hours of real pilot um, experience. When you have 10,000 hours of free flap, then you'll start having these really crazy questions. You one day wake up and say, hey, is there a better way? Is there a better flap? Can I do something else? And this is what happens. Because once you have that expertise, and once you welcome the hardship, embrace the challenge, you start getting these great ideas. And the thing is, this has to be a habit. It cannot be one thing. Your life has to embrace hardships of challenge and, and make it a habit to embrace the hardship, to work as a team, and always to aim forward. And if you have this excellence, and if this becomes a habit, this is truly the, the way of, require, of reaching excellence in your, pro, in, your, in, your, um, in your life, in your practice. Practice, patience, persistence. And once you build the experience, that leads to excellence. And when you have that excellence, you start getting these crazy questions, and you start looking beyond the box. 
So we talked about having an open mindset, you know, building on failures, and really accepting what is there, and knowing yourself, and embracing challenge. And of course, doing with a team makes it less painful, and you really have a great team to work with. And this all starts with you personally by asking questions, by seeking answers, and actually putting into action. And this becomes a cycle, and this cycle leads to change, and most of all, it leads to having a lot of fun. So embrace change, seek change, don't do the same thing. But remember, there's always a catch, there's always patience, there's always a lot of experience that's required by your sweat. Finally, I want to give this slide to you before I step down. There's three types of people in the world who makes it happen, who just watches it happen, and who don't know what the hell happened. So I don't know what type of person you want to be, but if I'm going to live once, I want to be like Raja, uh, who makes it happen. Just imagine, he built this empire, and this is the mecca of, of reconstructive surgery in this part of the world. So with that, think of how you can change yourself, and how you can change the society, and most of all, how you can shape the future of yourself and of plastic and reconstructive surgery. So once again, thank you very much. It's been an honor, and I look forward to the next following week to be part of you and to seek answers and to really put a lot of things into action. So thank you very much. Thank you so much.